Well, my friends, we are at the tail end of breaking down the six techniques that might be ruining your mix. We've done EQ matching, top-down mixing, parallel compression, mixing in mono, and only have mid-side processing left once this video is complete. Welcome to side chaining. Side chaining is the process of an audio signal being activated or triggered by the output of another audio signal. It is most notably used in compressors to make elements such as a bass duck when the kick drum hits. It's an extremely effective technique when used properly. And in this video, I'll be giving you four extremely effective ways to use side chaining. Tip number one side chaining the bass to your sub drops. Actually, since we're on the subject of subs, make sure you hit that subscribe button and give this video a like. If this video gets 100 likes, my mom might stop telling me to get a real job, so I guess my fate is in your hands now. Back to the topic. When you use a sub drop, it can totally compete for space with your bass guitar. This is especially true if you like to split your bass and leave your sub frequency smashed with compression. So what do you think happens when you leave your low end bass track playing when a bass drop hits? You won't be able to hear the sub drops impact so you'll turn it up, make it louder and louder just so that it's audible. But then what happens? It starts to distort the master if you're top down mixing or you're going to get a very angry note from your mastering engineer. If you side chain the bass to duck when the bass drop hits, you'll avoid this issue altogether. Let's check out an example of that. Now, if you notice, the bass drop is competing for space with the low end of the bass here. Let's listen to that in solo. A quick way to fix this is to side chain. So the first thing that we're gonna do is pull up wave C6. And a tip for Reaper users, uh, you can grab the routing button here from the sub drop, drag and drop it onto here, and it is now automatically uh, routing here and will engage the side chain. Now let's listen to it with this preset that I made <laughs> specifically for the video. Now those frequencies will not be fighting. Let's listen to it in the song. And there you have it, an effective way to use side chaining to make your bass drops not compete with the low end of your bass guitar. Tip number two. Increase your gating accuracy. Throw yourself into this situation. You're recording a kick drum and you're using an inside mic as well as an outside mic. Now, the inside mic of the kick drum is much less likely to pick up bleed than the outside mic, and when the bleed of a kick out mic is almost as loud as the source itself, setting a gate can be pretty difficult. But if you use the kick in mic as the side chain to activate the gate, your kick out mic will be gated based on the signal coming from the kick in. Now you'll have a much cleaner sounding gated signal overall. This is a really slept on tip, but make sure that you use it. On to tip number three, creating a pumping effect. This is probably the most common use of side chaining and is most popular in EDM and dance music. This is when a bass or synth is side chained to the kick drum to make a pulsating effect. Let's listen to Daft Punk's One More Time for a moment when the kick comes in. The bass is being affected by the kick and creating a pulsing or pumping effect. This can be applied to metal music as well though. When there's a lot of double bass parts happening, you can side chain the bass to the kick to push it out of the way and make sure that there aren't any clashing frequencies. This is best done with a multiband compressor so that you can specifically target the frequencies you want affected instead of the entire signal. This is a way to guarantee that your low end always stays perfect in a song. Tip number four, making reverb and delay effects. If you create a spacious reverb and and put it on an instrument, you can use another instrument to make it react in an interesting way. Psst, it's probably going to be the kick. Kicks are typically the backbone of side chaining, and since it's mostly used in EDM and pop, it makes sense. The kick is the driving force of those songs, so it would make sense that the effects would react based off of that. Let's see another example of this. All right, now let's try something weird.
Let's make the vocal react based off of the kick drum. Let's listen to those together. Now let's listen to what would happen if the kick was sent to this sidechain. Kind of weird, right? But it gives like a pulsing effect to it. Now let's listen to it in the song. So my point is, just get creative with it and try it out on new different things. It can make for really interesting effects. So let's go over the four side chaining tips we discussed in this video. One, side chaining the bass to your sub drops. Two, increasing your gating accuracy. Three, creating a pumping effect. Four, making reverb and delay effects. Now that you've heard these tips, don't be afraid to put them to use but also make sure to not overdo it. You can easily take the life out of a song by ducking important frequencies and then it wouldn't have a pulse. Get it? Because of the side chain pulsing? And then you'd have to pump life back into- All right, I'm done. Except I forgot to make a random wrestling reference. Uh, side chaining is the referee. It stands between the two sources that are fighting. There, I have now crossed my eyes and dotted my T's, or however that phrase goes. If you're an engineer on the come up, Give this video a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. You only have to do it one time. And tap that bell for notification so when a video drops, you know the location. Until next time, I'm out of here. Mic drop! Except as engineers, we know I would never really drop this because it'd get really expensive, even if it is a piece of shirt. Later.